the services. And the other kind of industry which actually, which the Modi government is trying to promote, make in India, is all manufacturing based. Okay? Now the issue with manufacturing, unlike the situation 15, 20 years ago, where you could import the know-how, set up your factory, and carry on with life, because the competitive barrier to you was the import of technology. We were such an insular country, isolated from the outside world, that you know you could run technology that was 20, 25 years old, you could still make money on it. The competitive edge came from your license, control, ability to customs duties. But that has changed. And you know now that there are basically two, I mean, because of internationalization, I mean, you can buy a Sony TV here for marginally more than you can buy it in Singapore. I mean, the barriers have come down. So, industry that is not able to survive against competition fades away. And that's a survival of the fittest, as most of the people in industry will know. So, what gives competitive advantage? Two things. One is a capital value. If you are a reliance and you can afford to invest 50,000 crores in a plant, now there are very few people in the planet who can afford to invest that. So, you have a capital value. But the other barrier is a knowledge barrier. You know how to do something which nobody else does. Okay? In the past, this same knowledge barrier used to be the know-how barrier. You got some know-how and nobody knew how to get that know-how. So what would happen in India, there was a know-how static and people would move from one company to the other and everybody soon is doing the same. But when you're doing a knowledge barrier, you're at the cutting edge. And what is the competitive resource that an industry has to use? They have to be at the cutting edge of knowledge. Now, that is an intellectual, you know, ideas don't just say, okay, now it's 9 to 5 people, I want you to produce 5 ideas. Ideas never come like that, right? Ideas come, you sit and you have no pressure. But in industry, you always have pressure. Because you have to survive. The next day you don't sell enough, you will go down. But academia is very protected. Okay? The function and the role of academia is to generate ideas. But if those ideas are not cutting edge, then we have a problem. So we have the environment, but we don't have the cutting edge because we have to stay connected with the rest of the world. Okay? Now, that really is a matter of concern for all of us. All of us, meaning whichever side of the table you are in, industry, academia, government, whatever you are sitting on, is a matter of great concern. Because we have this basic infrastructure, so-called universities, and we have industry who needs the cutting edge knowledge to, to connect. And we really, each one needs the other because, uh, you know, if anybody of you have actually done a transition from generating an idea to generating a product as maybe Dr. Rahul Kumar has done, you know how difficult it is. Okay, it's one thing to generate an idea, it's quite another thing to make a product. Okay, making a product, continuing to make the product and continuing to stay competitive is enough to take away your attention from all ideas. Okay, in that context, this is where this connect is going to become increasingly important to India. And in that context again, I would like to then basically set this panel discussion that we have maybe for the next 40 minutes or so. And then I'd like to open it up and contribute. So, um, I'd like to briefly introduce our panelists and if you can just in the interest of time, keep, uh, just tell people who, who you are. Uh, so we have uh, sitting there, Dr. Deshmukh, uh, if you could just introduce yourself. I'm Dr. Sumi And if you could just speak up because I have the mic but you have to shout. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in charge of Nanobiotech Waste Center at Teru. Prior to this I was with the pharmaceutical industry, starting from ex pharmaceuticals 1984 to 1998, 98 to 2014 with Piramal Enterprises Limited and uh, working with bio metabolites from the fungi particularly, they produce the drug like penicillin, cyclosporin, cyclosporin. So we have to discuss the drug from the from the body. Okay. So he has got extensive industry experience and now he is uh, also in a quasi um, academic institution. Terry is well respected. Um, um, Dr. Raghu Kumar. Uh, I'm Raghu Kumar. I work as a scientist at the National Institute of Ocean for nearly 25 years. I have a research career of more than 30 years. And my, I, at NIO, I worked on many fungi uh, and basically academic aspects. 
Then in 2005, I took the step of starting my own R&D research laboratory to convert, to make, to transfer ideas into practice. So I started a company, and it's called Microtech. It's a microwave biotechnology company. And uh, Dr. Anuj Goyal, if you could introduce yourself. Right, so uh, I work for Biocon. This is uh, as you know, the biotechnology based company. We spend a lot of work, effort in uh, research. You can sit down and be comfortable. Sure. So we spend a lot of effort in the R&D uh, in, in our organization. So we started working on uh, uh, fungi, right? From the days we were studying in enzymes, and Sri was you were there, I think, with us, um, and all the aspergillus and rhizophus, mucor, penicillium. We used to make enzymes, and then we became the first company to actually make the uh, second we made up like a drug called lovastatin from aspergillus in solid state fermentation. As everybody knows, that solid state fermentation, solid state is the right way the fungi like to grow, and then we. Uh, we uh, started growing them into tanks, which are called fermenters, and uh, we made uh, multiple drugs, which included uh, statins and immunosuppressants. And uh, over time, uh, uh, we have generated a lot of knowledge in you know, growing fungi in large tanks. One of the some of the largest tanks are as big as 100,000 meters. Okay, very good. Background. I think 
you will find that some of the symptoms or some of the issues of industry academia in reaching out to each other are probably symptomatic of